This episode is brought to you by Cox Home Life. Cox helps make your home smarter. And now you can pull up your home life cameras on your TV with your contour voice remote and some simple voice commands. To learn more, visit cox.com slash this is home. <clears throat> okay, recording. You have a story to tell. And maybe you've thought, I should start a podcast. Meet Anchor. It's a powerful app that lets you record a podcast anywhere and get it heard everywhere. All you need to do is download the free Anchor app and hit record. Just go to anchor.fm slash get started. Make a podcast with Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash get started. Great. I think we got it. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. How many of you would call yourselves a gamer? Well, if you play Wordle, you're a gamer. If you got sucked into Angry Birds, Candy Crush, or Trivia Crack, gamers all. I have three or four games on my phone to pass time waiting at the doctor's office or to watch while I sit with my family watching a show I'm either not into or can listen to rather than watch. That makes me a gamer. The demographics and statistics on gamers are actually quite surprising. According to Statistia, 38% of gamers are in the 18 to 34 year old segment, but 35% are 35 to 64. The female segment has always been far higher than one might expect. Statistia says 45% of gamers are female. Our guest today has data that suggests the majority of gamers are women. But gaming as an avenue for influence marketing seems a bit of an enigma. My perception of that is someone on Twitch playing Halo wearing my brand's logo on their t-shirt. But millions of people watch video gamers play games, just like mainstream consumers watch sports, go to concerts, and more. Arena Shamas says, People just appreciate the artistry at play with gamers, and those huge audiences present opportunities for brands. Arena is the executive vice president of revenue and strategy for Three Black Dot, a digital entertainment studio that connects brands to audience-driven creators, so a version of influencer marketing. She joined me to chat about the somewhat mysterious world, at least to me, of gamers as influencers. There's a lot of great insights in this discussion, folks. The gaming world relies heavily on the concept of community, with influential gamers having their own and a very genuine relationship with them. Brands coming to the table with them need to be community-focused, which is not the standard operating procedure for most brands and businesses. So pay attention. You're going to get a lot smarter today. Real quick before we get to that, though, let's chat a second about Tagger, the complete influencer marketing software that happens to be the presenting sponsor of this show. We've been talking to Pete Kennedy, Tagger's founder and president, about signals lately. That's the platform's new listening feature that allows you to monitor and leverage what influencers are saying about your brand competitors, or industry. So let's talk about the brands out there who are uh, using Tagger. And they're probably using Tagger for, you know, let's let's find influencers that fall into a certain vertical, et cetera. What, what's the first two or three things that you would recommend that they use signals for to layer on top of what they're already doing? So the first thing I would do is do a competitive analysis report to understand who are your top 10 competitors, uh, what campaigns do they place to market? Who are they hiring? How many impressions are they placing in market? And when you look at throughout a year, uh, what are the months that they're putting the most impressions into market? So it really gives you that propensity to spend analysis for all the brands within your industry. Um, you also might be doing something around uh, a time frame like Valentine's Day or, or Father's Day. Well, what is uh, what are topics that influencers are talking about right now around those times that you could uh, create a strategy around for your influencer marketing campaigns? Um, and then we also look at some really interesting things, like we were looking at ethical beauty, for example, because one of our clients is in that space, and just understanding, you know, over the last five years, where have conversations of ethical beauty migrated around the world? 
very strong in the US early on, and then it's migrated into the UK, it migrated over to, over to Australia. So really understanding global trends with these keywords helps you place strategies, not only in the United States and you know everywhere around the world. Thanks to Pete and to Tagger for the great product and for helping bring this podcast to you each week. To learn more and get a demo to see if Tagger is right for you, even if it's just to check out the new signals feature, just visit jason.online slash tagger today. That's jason.online slash tagger. We're shaking off the preconceptions about gaming and gamers. They're a potential path to influence marketing success. Arena Shamus of Three Black Dot will help us find it next on Winfluence. All right, Arena, I've been I've been putting this off, um, not necessarily intentionally, but you're talking to a guy who gave up gaming in 1996 when NHL 97 came out and everything was three dimensional for the first time. So a gamer, I'm not. But you can't work in the influencer space today and not know something about the, the gaming segment. Give us a sense for how big the opportunity is for brands who maybe aren't thinking about the gaming sphere in terms of influencers. Yeah, no, absolutely. And listen, um, it's interesting you say that because I'm not a gamer myself. Um, I came into the into this industry a few years ago because what have always, you know, what has always driven me is um, kind of in- innovation and 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 changes in our industry. So I've shifted from traditional entertainment to digital entertainment and now gaming. And, you know, the reason why I give you this background is because I feel like that defines the opportunity, right? The opportunity is absolutely um, insane. And I feel like we in the industry also sometimes falsely think of gaming as this insular niche, whereas actually, you know, it is it's here. It's it's entertainment. It's you know, it's really part of a lot of people's everyday lives and it's here to stay and it's it's here only to grow and just to give you kind of a few stats to kind of really paint um paint the bigger picture is um over 90 percent of gen z consider themselves gamers and for millennials it's about you know 83 i can't you know it's about 83 to 85 percent and i think what we falsely sometimes think is that gaming you know, it has to be when you think about gaming, you think that it has to be this hardcore gaming segment, right? You have to have, you know, these crazy monitors and screens and setup and controls and 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 all of that. But if you actually think about it, mobile gamers are gamers, candy crushers are gamers, right? So this segment is absolutely insane and it's a lot bigger than, you know, than traditional entertainment and digital entertainment combined. Well, you've already started to kind of kind of chip away at at the stereotypes here, but I know you like to dispel these myths that may exist about the gaming space, particularly those stereotypes that maybe, you know, brand side marketers or agencies who maybe haven't worked with gamers much might have. And I, I'm a prime example of that, of course. So let me tee you up here. When I think of brand partnerships in the gaming world, I envision some teenager playing, you know, Halo or World of Warcraft wearing my brand's logo on his T-shirt. How many ways am I wrong in that perception? <laughs> Well, I don't want to, you know, obviously don't want to offend you, right? So let's start with that. But um, gamers are incredibly diverse. Um, Over 50% of gamers are female, right? And I feel like that's Mm -hmm. something that while maybe years ago when gaming was a much, much smaller kind of niche hobby, um, you know, it was considered more so like a, um, a young white male sport almost. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's probably, I would compare gaming to, you know, passion points, right? That's what how marketers and advertisers think about it, right? They sponsor music festivals, right? Because that's something that people love, right? And, and brands want to be in that environment. Um, and sports, same thing, right? Brands spend millions um, in, in billions of dollars investing in platforms like the Olympics, right? Or supporting the sports, right? Again, because it's something, it's an environment where you find people and connect with them in a very organic ma- way because you're tapping into their passions. Gaming is that as well, right? And um, and because gaming is so diverse, 
you know, we're talking about mobile, we're talking about console, we're talking about PC, we're talking about, you know, all these, you know, different types of games. And on top of that, so there are people who actually play, play those games, right? And on top of that, you have people, and I think that's is the most that's an incredible phenomenon. You have people who watch other, you don't have to be a gamer to enjoy gaming. There are a lot of people and, you know, Twitch is a testament for that, right? There are a lot of people who like and do um, watch other people play. Um, And in that way, right, you kind of start, if you start kind of like taking away at some of those, to your point, you know, some of those stereotypes about gaming and think about it, from a, you know, from from the angle of that passion point, right? That, yeah, then you can see that gaming is incredibly diverse. Um, over 50% of gamers are female. Um, and in, in terms of like diversity angle as well, you have a lot of gamers who are, yeah, who are, who are, who are not male and who are not, who are not white and who are not hardcore, <laughs> hardcore gamers. It's actually, you know, if you look at it, it's actually quite the opposite. And we've done a lot of that. We do a lot of that, um, a lot of that work. And we specifically um, partner with diverse creators in the gaming space to um, elevate their profiles, but also to connect them with brands. Because for brands, and to answer, I know this is a very long-winded way of answer, answering your question, but you know what brands are ultimately interested in is they're interested in, in they're interested in the community that they tap into through gaming advertisers. And if you want to tap into diverse audiences, which are the consumers of those brands, then you have to be very smart about um, aligning yourselves with the gamers that create and build that community that um, brands want to tap into. Yeah, and uh, you, you you actually tapped into one of the things that has been a, a real hindrance for me personally in kind of understanding the gaming world a little bit better. I and 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 I'm I'm probably on the tail end of um, or, or early Gen X is probably I guess my you know I was born in 1973, so I'm not a millennial. Um, I'm in the Gen X area. And I grew up playing video games, and so I'm very familiar with them. But for whatever reason, I could never cross over into, okay, I'm going to spend my spare time watching someone else play a video game. Never crossed my mind. It doesn't cross my mind today as being interesting. You know, I, I but, but I was also never geeky enough to say, I'm going to look up all the codes to be able to get past this level. That was never my, I was never that deep into it. I wonder, I mean, it, it basically is a spectator sport, though, now. I mean, you've got literally millions of people watching other people play video, game, video games. I don't understand that. It is Am I missing something, or, or is it just a personal choice, and there's just a lot more people that choose the path that I didn't take? Well, Jason, so tell me, like, what, are you into sports? I am, yeah. I love sports. What do you watch? I watch uh, uh, soccer. I watch baseball. I watch basketball, yeah. Okay. Um, so you watch other people play. True, but I watch other real people physically compete in something. <laughs> right. But this is a competition too. And these people are incredible. It's, it's, an, it's artistry. They spend hours and hours and hours perfecting their, their craft. Right. Yeah. So in similar ways, while I think technology, and I think that the, the probably to me, and I don't want to sound controversial, right? But to me, the, the, the biggest difference between traditional sports or even music, right? Like you go to a concert, you listen to music. So, you know, I'm not I'm not musical in any way. No one wants to hear me sing, but I really love, <laughs> you know, hearing other people, um, you know, sing and, you know, make music and all of that stuff. Um, so the only difference between that is the physical and digital, right? Like you, the, the soccer, right? There are people playing on, in the field, right? And you watch them do it and you root for them. And, you know, that transition was first physical only. Now it's, you know, you can also see it on TV or streaming or whatever it is. So it's kind of already shifting into that sport, um, into, into that realm. I think with gaming, the, you know, the only difference with gaming and watching other people play is that that physical component does exist, but the physical component is not a spectacle, you know? Right. And I guess, you know, the way that I've I've tried to think about it is like when my son 
uh, started getting into video games, he would he had, he played one you know FIFA uh, you know soccer match, and when when he would you know perform a spectacular play, he was able to do a video clip and and either email it to me or show it to me. And so watching what he was able to accomplish on that video game to to recreate or to create some sort of spectacular physical you know activity for that character. I was always impressed. I was like, oh, that's really cool. So I, I I can see how people would get into it and fascinated with it. I've just, I don't know, for whatever reason, I've just never been able to, to, no, to I jump totally, over that wall. I know. I totally get it. And listen, like, you know, personal perspective, I'm, I'm with you, right? But <laughs> having, like, spent so much time now with gamers and understanding kind of what what drives them i think and also same things i was saying like having worked in traditional entertainment before like just creating these almost like connecting points between traditional and 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 gaming kind of made me see um all of it in a different light and i think one thing to add there um if you don't mind is um because we talked about diversity in gaming and if you think about it if you think about traditional sports right i think soccer used to be that because a lot of kids you know who might not necessarily, you know, for them, it was kind of like sports is a way to excel, right? And and maybe change potentially their economic situation. Um, and I think gaming too, the difference here is that you actually don't have that physical barrier to enter. It's actually a very egalitarian sport in a way. Everyone can be good at it. And I think it also, interestingly enough, wipes that separator between, oh, maybe women, you know, aren't as fast or aren't as, you know, can throw a ball, you know, that far or whatever it is right here. All, you know, all you have to do is you have a console and you, you know, and, and, you know, all, all you do is train, right? Like you train to be your, your best self. And in, in, in that respect, gaming has all of the potential to be a very, like to be an equalizing sport. That's an interesting perspective. Never thought thought of it that way, but it certainly takes the you know true human physical constraints or limitations out of the equation. I like that. So I, I, let, let me. I, I guess I want to ask a, a little bit more about brands and how they get involved with gamers in the gaming community. But I guess in order to find a better path to those questions, I know your work. You work with uh, Three Black Dot. Tell tell us a little bit more about the firm. What's your What's your idea? What what do you guys do? What's your ideal project or customer so that we can kind of understand your perspective on this, this world? Absolutely. So we say we are a gaming and entertainment company. We are very creator centric. Um, and when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to gaming, but also, you know, what we're there to do is we're really there to connect brands with the right um, strategies and the right marketing campaign executions within the gaming space. There are a lot of companies, there are a lot of clutter in the gaming space. And I think sometimes it's really hard to wrap your head around it because there's so many different segments. There are esports companies, there are tech companies, there are betting, you know, there's 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 all of that. We look at gaming holistically. We look at gaming as that, you know, pastime, right? That people that people um spend so many hours um doing and 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 we really look at it holistically. And 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 we see it as a larger part of entertainment, right? Um, so to us, partnering with a brand, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be, oh, here's a, you know, tournament you can sponsor, right? Mm-hmm. We can do that. That could be the outcome of the overarching strategy. But how we partner with brands is we go in and say, hey, what would you, what are your goals? What are your objectives? And what are your challenges? Yeah. Um, and through that space, we really build marketing, um, marketing campaigns with with our brand partners and align the right creators and the right creative and um, and the right metrics as part of the as part of the overall execution. Um, and on that note, as I mentioned, we do work a lot with diverse creators in the gaming space, and we also create um, content with them. So one of the recent um, successes that we had is a show called Gaming While Black, where um, we partnered with um, with black creators and kind of said, hey, what are what would you if you guys had a chance to tell a story, what would it be? Um, we we created that content with them, but we also partnered with um, with a brand. We partnered with Doritos and said, hey, let's tell this story together. Um, so. 
because one of the, I think the biggest challenges that brands have when it comes to gaming is because it's a newer segment, it's harder to maybe grasp it, but Mm -hmm. also it's a very, that audience is also very difficult to reach. So to us, we see ourselves as almost like having the key and the resources and the right people within that segment to align brands with in a, in a very organic way. So this question might lead to a, a more succinct, you know, second follow-up question, but I want to ask it this way because you started to touch on, you know, kind of approaching it with the right creative, the right strategy, the right idea. So another one of these kind of predisposed ideas I have about gaming partnerships, if I'm thinking them through, is that the only products that seem to make sense, if I'm not a deep thinker about this, obviously, are, you know, I might hire a gaming creator or influencer to talk about a new game or a new gaming headset or a controller. But if I'm a clothing brand or a restaurant or Doritos even, although that seems to make sense to me because you're gaming, you might be eating Doritos. Um, but or maybe even, you know, something more closely relevant, like a maybe a bike or a skateboard brand, it still seems like it's a stretch for me. How is a gamer an influencer, someone who has a lot of followers, a lot of viewers on Twitch or YouTube or whatever, how are they going to connect those types of brands with their audience? What are some just examples so that we can, again, so the brands out there can kind of get their head around this opportunity? Yeah, for sure. So I think a lot of it is, a lot of it is content, right? Creating content together because a lot of gaming creators, you know, there's some, to your point, there's some gaming creators that, you know, all they talk about is gaming, right? Um, and there are other gaming creators, and there are a lot of them in this space. There's one female creator who actually built a multi-million following by talking about how bad she is at <laughs> video games, you know. But she also hosts like dinner parties on her like on her streams, right? And um, where people talk about gaming, right? It's like cooking and gaming shows. There's there's such if you start digging into it. There's such incredible content, but there's also a lot of crossover, right? Because when we start to talk about lifestyle, right? And that overall entertainment versus thinking of gaming as just consoles and just talking about, hey, how do you beat someone else at this game? That exists too. I'm not not excluding that. But you're also talking about what, you know, people love and what they're interested in within that community, right? So when you start that conversation about, fandom and community that you might be into video games that also means that you might be into skateboards right and that also means that you love certain brands because that's what defines you as you know being part of that community and ultimately again like I feel like all brands want is to be part of the community right Um, to tap into the, the existing communities and then from then on build their own so for, you know, to your point, for a skating brand or a fashion brand or even a automotive brand, right, to be part of that community and to be like, hey, I really, we really, you know, if you could just love our car as much as you love <laughs> this talking about this game, you know, we're, we're winning. So I'm curious then, my follow-up question to that that leads to is, are there, uh, is gaming right for any brand or are there are there types of products or companies that really do make more sense to be playing here versus others? Yeah, well, I would say, you know, I'm a little biased, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know to what extent you'll, you know, my, my answer would be would be objective. But I honestly really do believe that gaming is for every brand. You know, a lot of um, cosmetics brand, right? Makeup and, makeup and cosmetics, you know, went into gaming because a lot of streamers they want to look good when they're when they're streaming right as an example um a lot of them take their streams on the go so even like cars right if you can you know um it's yeah it's 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 part of their lives right so i honestly do believe that gaming not only is for every brand it should be and it will be for every brand and every brand will find its own niche and space within that larger gaming ecosystem um, of course, there's certain brands that, you know, where the there might be certain limitations, like alcohol brands have certain limitations or 
kids brands, right? A lot of gamers are very young. So you kind of have to walk that really fine line of bringing brands in, in a way that works for them, but also in a way that, um, you know, respects all the, respects all the guidelines. So um, yeah. And of course, for some brands, it'll be more relevant than, than others. And if a brand says, Hey, we don't want to be in gaming, that's totally fine. You know, that's also, you know, how some brands have said, Hey, music is not part of our strategy or, you know, sports isn't, but I think on kind of a larger um, if you look at the larger ecosystem, I think that there's no denying that brands have to, those brands that want to, they, they, you know, they're, they're faced with having to figure out what their strategy within the gaming space is, because to your point, it isn't very, it isn't very straightforward. You know, it's even giving you an example with, I think a lot of the times, you know, brands kind of think, oh, okay, let me try Twitch. Let me do a media buy on Twitch. Right. And there's a lot of, you know, sometimes there's backlash. Like, why are you appearing here? Why are you appearing in my space? Because again, gaming is so, um, because of how long brands haven't played in this space, you know, now gamers are very, very, um, I I wouldn't call it hesitant, but just very, Thoughtful skeptical, about skeptical, probably. I think skeptical. Yeah. It's like, hey, what, what the hell are you doing in here? I don't exactly. want to. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Why are you here all of a sudden? Oh, right. Now this is, <laughs> you know, we, this is kind of the next buzzword that you want to be, you know, that you want to be part of. And that's why, like, my message to brand it, brands is, you know, let's be thoughtful about how you, you know, how you enter in this, how you're entering the space. And I have no doubt that, you know, they'll be successful. Some of the examples that we, you know, with um, and and you're right, Doritos might be a bit of a closer, um, you know, has have a bit of a closer connection. But when Doritos sponsored Gaming While Black, and we also created a lot of branded entertainment as part of the experience, we had so many comments from the audience saying, "I went and bought Doritos just because you're supporting my favorite creators do what they love." You know, and I think that is an ultimate test to, you know, how you play. No, no pun intended, how you play in the gaming, in the gaming space. (laughs) Yeah, that's that, that early, early adopter status and being able to empower the community as a brand is, is certainly, it's almost, it's kind of a first mover play, but it makes a lot of sense for folks. It'll be interesting to see how those non-first movers shake out over the next few years and see how they get involved in relevant ways. All right. So, uh, Irina, when you, when you uh, go home tonight and you open up your phone or whatever, what's your game? What are you playing? So I have to tell you that I am not a gamer, (laughs) but I think of it more so as like from a business perspective, but, um, nor do I unfortunately have time because I do have to tell you, Jason, that that first meeting that we were supposed to have, it yeah. was my first day back from my maternity leave. <laughs> so I play very different games now, but, um, <laughs> but Wordle, Wordle really did get me because it's yeah. so quick and, and, and easy and fun. And, um, Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in, I'm into the dumb block games, like <sighs> 2048 and stuff. And I, I can't, the breakout type stuff. I can't, I can't stop playing them. I'm terrible at them, but I can't stop playing them for whatever Jason, reason. I have to tell you, you are a gamer. That means that you are a gamer <laughs> and that brands need to be targeting you. <laughs> well, I can I, I, I find it very hard to believe anyone would ever want to watch me play one of my stupid block games. But <laughs> if anybody's game, uh, if anybody's, you know, to use the pun, if anybody's game for it, uh, you can watch me play whatever you want. It's fine with me. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Irina, where can people find Three Black Dot and you online if they want to connect? Yeah, for sure. I think LinkedIn's the best probably for both. Um, I, you know, even though I don't, as I said, I don't, gaming is not my everyday time spent. Well, professional it is. Um, and I think about it all the time. But um, I love talking everything gaming. So please, honestly, please, please, please reach out. I'm here to just kind of brainstorm and um, advice and share and all of that. Because, you know, yes, we've created so many successes in this space, but behind every success is a learning. So I'm always up for sharing them. And I think one of the things that I'm also super excited about, you know, to talk uh, to talk about is, 
um, is metaverse and, you know, NFTs and crypto because all of this, and I think that's the last kind of message that I wanted to leave everyone with is, you know, gamers have been on this for years, right? Like it, this has just entered our ecosystem very, very recently, but for gamers, this isn't anything, this isn't anything new. And they've been probably the most successful at launching, um, you know, their, whether it's their NFT collections or transacting with, you know, transacting with crypto um, and kind of generally thinking about and, and playing in the, in, in, in the metaverse space before the term maybe hasn't even been like really coined. Yeah, I've been I've been spending quite a bit of time uh, in my spare time trying to figure out the metaverse just from a, you know, strategy brand perspective and whatnot, trying to get a, a little educated on it myself. We we spent some time talking about that a couple episodes ago, and I will, of course, continue to evolve that thinking. But I would definitely say to a brand, if you want to find someone who can help you start to think about and walk into the metaverse, gamers are probably you know high on that list because you're right. They've been dealing with virtual reality and, and virtual worlds and what not for a long time. And they were, you know, sort of the, sort of the early adopters, bleeding edge folks on NFTs and things like that. So good stuff. So, well, Irina, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to share with us today. I'm, I'll make sure that all the links are in the show notes so people can find three black dot in you. And, uh, and I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go start up a Twitch channel now so people can watch me play my block game. Great. We'll represent you. Just go, just let us know when. Ooh, I got, I got agency representation already. And I, all I play is 2048. There you go. I love it. (laughs) Useful information that. Gang, I've got one more thing to tell you about this week that I may dive deeper into in the coming weeks, but there's an event coming up for kids that's just too good to not tell you about. My pal T. Adiola was frustrated by the fact that no STEM education programs, that's science, technology, engineering, and math programs, uh, in schools, none of them talk about the opportunities for kids to become creators or influencers, if you like. So he's doing something about it. T. is running two spring break cohorts of a creator camp for kids ages 8 to 12 in Dayton, Ohio. The first cohort is March 21st through the 26th. The second is March 28th through April 2nd. The week will be spent teaching the kids how to create YouTube videos, but also how to think about being a creator from a business and marketing perspective. It's not just about creating the YouTube videos, but being an entrepreneur through that creation. It is beyond awesome. I'm going to be there because T has asked me to both speak to the kids about how they can carve out a career as a creator and how brands leverage creators and pay them but I get to judge the videos too. Now, I'm telling you because if any of you live within a reasonable distance from Dayton, Ohio, you can sign your child up or you can come and see the creations on the Saturday of each week's wrap-up. I'll be there too. I'll drop the links to the cohort signups in the show notes of this episode. Go find the post and register and I will see you there. For the rest of you, I'll definitely report back. I can see me doing some special recordings for the podcast if I can get it all organized while I'm there. So. Stay tuned. And don't forget, I love feedback on the show, and you can help make a future episode of Winfluence awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Record a voice memo if you like and send it to me via email or just send a regular email to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. Hi. 
Hi, I'm Sarah Panous, and if you work in the content marketing space, I invite you to subscribe to the Marketing with Empathy podcast. Join me and other industry experts as we share ideas to help you connect with your audience to drive better business results. I've spent the last 20 years driving content for billion-dollar brands. Now I help marketers build winning brand storytelling strategies to reduce feelings of overwhelm and confusion. Think of it as a content marketing jam session mixed with chicken soup for the soul. Subscribe to Marketing with Empathy today. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.